Good morning. Welcome to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Tuesday means Ross Gregory from the Evening Chronicle and uh, Reach PLC is here. How are you, Ross? I'm good, thanks, Steve. How are you? Very good, mate. Good to see you. Uh, got your Christmas shopping done yet? All done. I'm, I'm, I'm well prepared this year. I've been prepared. Everything's all, well, the kids' stuff's all, all wrapped. I've got one or two tiny little bits, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm well on this year for a, for a change. It's, uh, it's all good. Good stuff, yeah. I'm ahead of the game as well, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's not long till the big fella arrives. Uh, and looking forward to that. I think everybody in the chat's been getting very excited as well, which is great, <laughs> but not as excited as we are about Newcastle United's season restarting, which we'll look at towards the end of the show. Obviously, the Bournemouth game tonight, uh, Carabao Cup, chance to get a place in the quarterfinals. Very excited about that. But we want to start with what Tom Dixon mentioned in the chat first up, which was that Bruno has won the Fans Footballer of the Year award. Now, who brought that to our attention? Well, it was Ross Gregory, wasn't it, Ross? It was. It's a. Um, it's a. It's a. It's a third uh, iteration of the of the Fans Footballer of the Year that, that Reach PLC have, have run. I, I assume some of you know who Reach are. Just just as a little bit of background, Reach is the publishing company that owns the Mirror, the Express, the Star, plus a. Uh, a load of, of regional newspaper titles from the, the Liverpool Echo and the, the Manchester Evening News up to obviously the Chronicle and the Teesside Gazette and, and further afield up into Scotland and, and Wales. Huge, huge organisation. Um, and the Fans Football of the Air is, is something that we've run now, like I say, for the th- for three years. And it's um, it's just a chance to for, for fans readers to to vote for their player of the season not sorry it's not for the season the player of 2022 player of the of the year and we've done it on a couple of levels one is a there's a national vote um so uh all the all the journalists within reach all the football journalists in reach put their nominations in and we shortlist from from those nominations um and then create a, 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 a nine or ten player shortlist um, and that goes to a national vote and then each each uh, regional title as well always puts their puts their four or five um nominations through for um for their club player of the year so um and then it's up to the up to the, the readers and the fans to vote for for whoever they think is uh, is the most kind of worthy winner this year um because of his performances in in over the last 12 months bruno was um, was shortlisted for the for the national player of the year against some really really stiff competition, including Mo Salah, who who won it the two years previously, um, Kevin De Bruyne, who's obviously had a, an unbelievable twelve months, um, Harry Kane, Kaya Saka, all all great players, Erling Haaland, um, even though he's only be, really been in this country for the last um, for the last five four five months, uh, Beth Mead was was in there as well for her. Performances for the for the lionesses in in the um, in the Euros in the in the summer, um, but you know fantastic response that we had more than sixty thousand uh, votes came in, and at the end Bruno was crowned the winner, which was uh, which was a bit of a surprise. Mo Salah was was heavily tipped to to, to win it for a third year. Uh, he, he gets that he gets the Liverpool public and the Egyptian following um, behind him, but uh, but. Newcastle United fans came out in their droves, and and um, and not just Newcastle fans. You know, there was there was there was votes from around the country as well uh, for Bruno, and it just shows what a fantastic twelve months he's had. What an impact he's had on uh, not just on Newcastle United, but also the the Premier League. He won obviously the the national crown. He also won the 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 Newcastle Player of the Season. He was up against Kieran Trippier, um, Miggy Almiron, and Joe Linton, who were who've been nominated by 
by Lee Ryder at the Chronicle for for the Newcastle player of 2022. And Bruno came out on top of that as well. So um, fantastic, fantastic effort. I want to thank everybody on um, on here who who voted and who who got involved in it, whether you voted for Bruno or, or not. Personally, I voted for for Beth Mead. I thought she she was a she was a worthy recipient. But more than uh, more than delighted to see that. Um, that that Bruno won, and thanks to everybody who who took part. It was um it was a fantastic response and and a, a, a real um, genuine winner um and somebody who who we hope will will be picking up more trophies and more accolades over the next uh, few years while uh, while wearing a black and white shirt. All the more bizarre that he didn't really get a chance at the World Cup as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you know, I do. I know the Brazilian manager, you know, only came to the ground once really to to, to have a look at the Brazilian contingent that we have, but I just. Just strange, you know, and they weren't playing. They weren't playing to the best of their abilities either. And maybe it was that, you know, it was Paqueta or him. And I'm, I don't, I don't think Paqueta had a particularly bad World Cup. I just think, you know, Bruno would have added something that little bit different because he showed that, you know, he can play either as a defensive midfielder or as an attacking midfielder. But you know, yeah, uh, um, you know, they've, they've got a, 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 an array of talent at the disposal. The the, the Brazilian team, haven't they? You know, you look at. Um, Obviously, Casemiro was was in there as as kind of that that um, that fulcrum in, in the midfield and had a good World Cup. Paqueta, yeah, you, then you've got Neymar and you've got you know all the attacking options. You've got Charlesons and your Rafinhas and Vinicius Junior and everybody else like that. So it's a it's a really difficult team to, to break into. But but you would have thought looking at his performances over the last twelve months that, that Bruno deserved more of a run out, more of an opportunity. I think. Um, whether he would have he would have made that difference and, and helped Brazil go further, then, then who knows? It's it's um, it's a hypothetical kind of kind of scenario. But I think he couldn't have done any more over the last last twelve months. Like you say, Steve, he's he can play in a variety of positions. He can play as, as the as the six. He can play as the eight. He can probably play as a ten as well in there as well. Um, he's got it all in that in that midfield area. But it is a, a, a very talented Brazilian squad um, and. And hopefully you'll get more opportunities in the in the future moving forward for to, to shine on that international stage as well as as well as the Premier League. And if he continues doing what he's been doing for Newcastle, then um, I'm sure those opportunities will will come very very quickly from. Yeah, I've just posted an article in the chat by Lee Ryder uh, from the Evening Chronicle. Uh, Isaac touch and go to take part in Newcastle United's festive program. Have a look at it uh, when you can. Uh, disappointing this, Ross. You know, on on so many fronts because I think we all expected Isaac to be fully fit and and potentially involved in the trip to Saudi. He wasn't. Um, didn't feature in the friendly at the weekend. Uh, there was a little bit of train of thought from John uh, in the chat last night that maybe this is Eddie Howe. You know. You know, pulling a fast one, I guess, on the future opposition, and that Isaac may appear sooner rather than later. But I, I doubt it. I, I can't see Eddie Howe doing that. I, I do think that they're just being very, very, very cautious in rushing their record signing back because they don't want a situation developing where this becomes a long term injury and, you know, the right is season off. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think Eddie Howe is trying to play any mind games or trying to pull, pull the wool over anybody's eyes. If he, I think, if if Isaac was was close or or um, was in a position where where they were a bit more comfortable, I think they would have given him some game time over the last last two two matches, the two kind of warm up games, if you like, because he needs games. He needs he needs to be tested out on a on a pitch. You can't just then throw him into a into a, a you know a, a cup match or a or a Premier League game with the pace and the intensity that that comes when he's had so long out. So no, I don't think he's. Um, I don't think there's any kind of ulterior motives there. I just think that they're being very, very cautious with them. And and as you say, Steve, I think it's 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 probably the, it, well, it is the right thing to do. It's you've got to you've got to be 100 percent on on a player's um, fitness, and, and you, we don't want to see him breaking down. It's slightly worrying. I think it's slightly concerning that this injury has taken so long to to heal up, and that that the progress hasn't been as quick as as what would hope for and, and what the club hoped for. And there's, there's been obviously a, a little setback along the way. Um, but if it takes, it takes an extra, you know, if it takes an extra three, three weeks, then it's better than him being out for an extra three months is, is how I would look at it. Um, we all hope that he can get back and, and get back fit and be a real asset in this second half of the the season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit concerning, but you've got to err on the side of caution. Oh, most certainly, mate, 100%. Um, the other topic of conversation 
on the show over the last couple of days has been Alan to Maximum. Obviously, the friendly performance, um, you know, it, it was a typical friendly, you know, Newcastle coming out on top. I think that was that was the main thing, but also given the opportunity, the likes of Matt Target to get 90 minutes, you know, more or less 90 minutes under his belt. Um, and and players just who, who just haven't featured, given given the opportunity to Pope and Trippier, who both wanted to play the opportunity to get, you know, maybe he's but you know, reconditioned and playing in the colder weather. Um, but you know, Maximin, of course, had an opportunity to to shine. I, I, I'm not going to criticise the player. You know, I, I just think that there's there's something missing with Maxi, and, and it's a hell of a debate to have because John in in, in the chat says Morn and Maxi's getting a bit of stick. Before his injury, he was clearly changing his style and defending more. That's how he got the hamstring ch- uh, trouble. I, I do think he's trying, mate. I do think he's trying. But I think sometimes the the problem that, that you know you have with a footballer is when you've played a certain way for so long, it, it's very difficult to change the way that you play. Um I do think he's tracking back more. I do think he's trying, but I think what 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 he's now doing is I think his selection is wrong. Whereas in the past he would just go on this mazy dribble and and then you know decide to have a shot. He's now stopping thinking and passing the ball. You know, and I think we've taken away we've taken away what was what was positive about Maxi, um, and we've replaced it with a more defensive Maxi, which is good for the team. But we've taken something away from him, and I I just think he needs to try and find that balance. I know that was a rather complicated way of describing what I'm trying to say, but it but do you get where I'm coming from? I just think I, I think we've lost something with Maxi now. I do, I do. I, I understand completely where you, you're coming from. It's a, it's kind of the age old problem, isn't it? You know, sometimes as a as a as a football fans, as you know, if you've coached, if you've played, if you've watched the game or whatever, you sometimes there's a tendency to focus on what a player can't do rather rather than what a player can't do, what what a player doesn't bring rather than what he what he does bring. Um and sometimes I think that is the case with with um Alan Say Maximum, you know, he's he's Obviously, super, super talented, and he's he's a he's a real kind of spark, a player that that fans kind of it gets them on the edge of the seat. But also, he's he's got that element where he will frustrate fans. He will frustrate fans. He'll frustrate his teammates. He'll frustrate um, Eddie Howe and his coaching staff. And then he'll pull one out and, and ping one into the top corner from from twenty yards or twenty five yards after beating three three players because he's he's just that type of player. And you never, I, I don't think we'll ever get. Consistency out of out of Alan Saint Maximum that um, you know we all want to see you know player players who 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 beat who beat men and and you know excite fans but there is that also that other element where we want to have players who who play for the team and who who um, who will fit within a structure and I think that's really important to Eddie Howe as well I think he, he wants players who can who can um, you know, do the defensive side who can who can fit into it into a team strategy into a team structure. You know, there's no you know, Miggy Almiron's a, a really good example. You know, someone who works exceptionally hard both ways. You know, tracking back, giving giving support to to the fullback behind him, whether it's Kieran Trippier or whoever, but also being a, a threat at that other end. Jacob Murphy's a, a, another good example. You know, he, he, he's nowhere near as talented as. Is Maxi, but he, he offers something a little bit different going the other way. You know, we've seen Joe Linton play out wide um, a few times recently um, because again he offers that that kind of defensive um, stability in in front of the in front of the fullback. So um, I can see why why Maxi frustrates frustrates um, fans. Um, how do you get the best out of him? I don't know. Eddie Howe will, will hopefully be able to to unlock that and, and find the find the solution. Um I said in the summer, if if for, for those who, who can cast their minds back back then, I said in the summer that I um, I didn't think Maxi was a was a Eddie Howe type of player ultimately in the long term. And I don't think that he'll that he'll ultimately fit into the into the style of play and, and I wouldn't be surprised if he if he moves on. Um and I, I, I still stick by that. I think he is trying. He is he is trying to adapt his game, and we all hope that he that he's a, a huge success at Newcastle because with the, the ability and the talent that he's got, there's not many players around who've got that ability. And, and you want to you want to keep the whole of them, and you want to you want to you know maximise no pun intended that that kind of talent. Um, but I, I've just I've always got my, my doubts about it about whether 
he can change, whether he can be that player that, that we all want him to be, that Eddie Howe wants him to be. Um, but it's going to be a hell of a ride watching him. It's going to, it's always going to be a hell of a ride watching him, watching him play, watching him try. He, he's exciting talent, and we all hope that he can um, that he can turn it on regularly and consistently in a black and white shirt. Yeah, the Brazilian manager's left, hasn't he? He has, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. always said that he was that this was his last uh, this was his last tournament, yeah. So maybe a chance, maybe a chance for uh, you know for Bruno and and even Joe Linton if he continues in the same uh, form. Um, from from his perspective, to get a little bit more of a, a run out. Also in the Chronicle uh, today, I'm going to stick the link in for uh, this particular story. It's about Jamal Lascelles, um, and and really just. Um, re-emphasising what I said on the show last night from Lee Ryder. Uh, Lascelles wants to make memories and is desperate to be skipper that ends the trophy drought. Now, you know, Eddie Howe waxed lyrical about him when he was in Riyadh. Um, he got a start against uh, Rio Vallecano at the weekend. Um, I didn't think he played that badly. He had a typical, you know, Jamal Lascelles game. You know, when he's got time to think about it and with a ball at his feet, you know, he's like Bambi on ice. But when he's got no time to think about it and he's you know just getting in amongst you know the center forwards and and strikers and and winning that ball and and defending as, as defenders do then he's great I'm I've got to be perfectly honest I, I, that's the way I was when I played you know I'd, I'd sometimes kick the man and kick the ball second but but also you know if I had time to think about what I was doing I, I was a bit of a panicker so I, I know what I'm talking about when I say a center half um like that it, you know, what's your thoughts on, on that? I mean, he's clearly committed to the club. Eddie Howe likes him. Um, he's a big influence in the dressing room. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts him tonight alongside Botman with Bruno, with um, with Byrne coming in at left back and Trippier being in at right back. I, I think that would be the back four. I agree. I think I think he'll play tonight. I think, um, obviously, Fabian Scherz come back from the World Cup and probably hasn't hasn't featured as, as much. So it'll be a... a a bit, a, bit, a bit of a gamble putting there, uh, putting Sharon, but Jamal Lascelles, I think, is uh, is a more than uh, more than adequate replacement. He is what he is, Jamal Lascelles. Let's you know, let's you know, some players are, are some. Not everybody's going to be super super talented. Not everybody's going to be a Rolls Royce of a defender who, who can bring the ball out and start spraying 40, 50 yard passes or, or breaking breaking the lines with a with a pass or. Or, or whatever, you know, that's not, there's, there's different players and different personalities within a change room. Um, and that's, Jamal Lascelles is a, is a, is a, a top end championship. No, actually, that, that, that's unfair. He's a Premier League, he's a Premier League centre half. He's, he's not going to take, I think we all understand that he's, that he's, if Newcastle want to go and challenge for Champions League places on a regular basis and on a, um, and, and play in Europe and everything else like that. And Jamal Sells probably isn't going to be the, the, that centre half that takes the club onto that level. If he if he stays at the club, he will always be around the, the the kind of third or fourth choice, I think. But that's fine as well. You need squad players in a in a in a in a team. You can't just have you know two centre halves who play every game and then one gets injured and you've got nobody else to, to come in. And you need players who understand their roles within a within a team and within a squad. And Jamal Sells. I think understands now his his role. He's he's got that leadership and that 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 kind of quality around the change rooms that that Eddie Howe likes. He's a good player. He's a he's a he's a very good player. <laughs> you know, for those of us who who've played at a, at a, at a level, then in, or, or just played at whatever, you know, it, it's very very hard to become a Premier League footballer. It's it's exceptional. You've got to be outstanding, outstanding. You know, whatever it is, zero point one percent of of players who play become Premier League footballers, you've got to be a hell of a player to get that level. Yes, he's not as good as others, and yes, he's not going to take the club into the into the Champions League. But I think he's a more than adequate squad player. He's he's great around the the club. He deserves his opportunity tonight. I really like Jamal Lascelles as a as a person. I think he's decent as a player. Um, you just got to understand what he what he can and what he can't do. Again, a bit like Alan Alan Saint Maxim. You know, we're, we're not going to try and change. Jamal Lascelles and asking to stop being uh, Bobby Moore or Rio Ferdinand or Franz Beckenbauer bringing the ball out the back. Just let him do what he does and and, and let the, let him fit within the, the team and and hopefully he has a good game tonight because I do think he will start. Yeah, I do as well. Uh, we will wait and see though. And uh, Les says, I know what you mean, Steve. Danger of over managing uh, a player, but you're also right. ASM does 
really need to find the balance. Um, Jordy Toomba Life says, Morning, Stephen Ross. 3 0 win, and I'm not talking about the tune tonight. If you know, you know. That's right, isn't it, Ross? Is this a Wickham thing? Yeah, Wickham, we've got uh, we've got Heaven in the Durham Challenge Cup. Um, I think it's a quarter final tonight. Um, if the game's on, I've got to, after, as soon as this, um, as soon as this show's finished, I'm, I'm heading down the Glebe to, to have a look at the pitch because we've had a bit of rain and, uh, and obviously the frost and the snow has melted. So, yeah, big game, big game for Wickham tonight as well if it's, uh, if it's on. Good luck to Wickham. I'll take 3 0 as well. I'll def- definitely take 3 0. <laughs> Um, John just commenting on uh, Eddie Howe's interviews, and if um, you're a regular to the channel, um, you will know that I do like my own review of Eddie Howe's press conference. I try to condense it for everybody because not everyone's got twenty odd minutes to listen to the, the press conference. Although you know people do enjoy listening to Eddie Howe uh, far more than they did the previous incumbent in the dugout. Uh, but yeah, I do like to try and uh, you know go through it and address it. So we always put something up there, but. Eddie is a tremendous in interviews. It's an art form. You talk quite a lot and sound convincing, but really he says very little. It's it's a quality skill that most managers don't have. I have to agree with you, John. And you will have interviewed many players in your time, Ross, and, and managers. Um, you, you know, he's, he's very like Rafa in, in a lot of ways for me. Rafa, Rafa was, was very articulate, very clever, and only really gave you what he wanted to give you in an interview. Yes, absolutely. But I'll be honest, as a journalist, it's dull. It's dull as anything. I, I understand it. It, it. He's very good at it and very clever at it. But as a journalist, you want you want sound bites. You want uh, you want you know you want a little bit of a little bit of not controversy, but you want someone who says something. As Steve Bruce, nowhere near the the, the the level of manager that Eddie Howe is. But at least you would get some lines out of Steve Bruce. You you know some of them, some of them you 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 know you might be shaking your head and being a bit bewildered. But at least you got lines out of it something that you could you could write up and think oh this is going to make a story this is going to generate a bit of interest anyhow you know he's right it's it, it's very it's he says a lot without saying without saying without giving anything away uh, very articulate rafa exactly the same rafa did a lot of stuff off the record with with the journalists and i, and I don't know if um if if anyhow is, is similar i think he's a little bit still a little bit more guarded but um yeah as a journalist, it's difficult. I think it's, uh, I'm my journalist head on. You know, I, I look at somebody like, like let's think, Sean Dyche, You know, who's 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 very very good in press conferences as well. A bit like an Eddie Howe, but he, he's got a little bit extra kind of spark and personality, and he can give you give you a little bit of uh, things. And he's not a, not afraid of having a having an opinion. That's that's what we um, that's what we want. Sometimes I've I've interviewed a few managers and a few players who obviously over the years. Eddie Howe, remind, I've never interviewed or spoke to, to Rafa, but Eddie, Eddie Howe reminds me a little bit of uh, Chris Hutton as well. Chris Hutton was was very similar. Always a lovely fella. Had a load of time for years as a, as a journalist and would pick up the phone and answer, and, and answer queries and, and whatever, but never really give you too much. Um, so, yeah, you, you want you want managers as a journalist who will who will give you that little spark, that little line that you can uh, that you can write up. And, and Eddie Howe doesn't quite do that as, as much, but that's not his job ultimately at the end of the day as well. His job is to manage the football team and to, and to, to, to be as, um, as, as transparent and open as, as what he can. He's not there to feed, feed journalists' lines and, and whatever, but that's, that's my take of it from a, from a kind of media perspective. Got to say a big happy birthday to John, just as Alan in the chat, uh, the man who runs the NUFC Matters website and merchandise and memorabilia, etc. So a big thank you to John, uh, the man who also um, has helped raise a vast amount of money for the food bank with the T-shirts and set up Peter Beardsley Soccer School. Well done, John. I uh, hope you have another 50 years, mate. Um, but uh, you'll have to lay off the football, mate, with that shoulder. I hope you get that sorted out. Sure, we'll see you tonight. Uh, John asks you, just carrying on from this uh, on this managerial situation, says, Ross, are you in favour of managers wearing the heart on a sleeve in interviews? Eddie doesn't, and I reckon that's a positive thing. It can avoid public criticism of players, and smart managers know it. Of course, Kevin Keegan, um, uh, former Newcastle manager, uh, nobody wore his heart on his sleeve more than him. Yeah, perfect, perfect example. I, I literally was just thinking of, of Kevin Keegan there after I'd finished, after I'd finished speaking there before, and and yeah, Kevin Keegan was a perfect example of a, of somebody who's who's creating interviews, who, who who journalists love speaking to because there's always something that will come out of that interview. It'll never be dull. It'll never be. Um, it'll never be. It'll be boring, and you'll you'll get a, a kind of line or two out of it. Bobby Robson, another one for those who who were fortunate to, to speak to to Bobby Robson and about football, so passionate, so so um, so um, 
articulate as well, but just wore his heart on his sleeve. Just loved talking about the game. Loved, loved giving little little bits and pieces away and and, and just speaking about it. So. You know, if you're looking at ex Newcastle managers Keegan and, and Bobby Robson, a, a real kind of journalist's dream. Um, less so your your, your Eddie Howes and your um, and your Chris Hutons and, and your Rafa's probably. Although you know, speak to journalists who did who did deal with Rafa and they they really enjoyed it as well. Um, I think it's it, from a but like I say, you know, Eddie Howes, that's not his job. It's not his job to, to do it. His job is to be is to um, is to kind of speak to the media, give them what 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 he needs to give them, protect the players, which he does. Um, and John's absolutely right on that. Um, he's a he's a dream from a from a PR PR perspective. You know, you can imagine some of the um, some of the, the the media team at Newcastle United under previous managers. When you know, when when Steve Bruce has, has said something, they're just you know shaking their head and or you know head and hands type of thing. They're not going to have those issues or those problems with Eddie Howe. He's very very um, clever and very very guarded with the with the media in the in the right sort of way and not not cause any controversy and not and not um you know not slip up too much so um yeah from a club perspective Eddie Howe's brilliant but not necessarily always from a from a journalist perspective in my opinion. Jordy Toombalay says it wasn't Wickham it's the England cricket test team <laughs> fair enough fair I enough I think he's reeled yeah, us yeah. in there I think he's reeled us in knowing that we would answer <laughs> Wigan no a 3-0 win for the England test test team this morning as well yeah they sealed that as well yeah yeah I've got me um, I've got me uh, he's done his like there, there yeah I've been done like a kid right? the England test team but I'll take a 3-0 win for the England test team today I'll take a 3-0 win for Wigan tonight and I'll take a 3-0 win for Newcastle as well we'll, uh, we'll go for the hat trick yeah Good stuff. Eddie never gives anything away. Far better with the media than the fraud who preceded him. Yes, Stu, I do miss your little comments there. Bruce out um, that he used to uh, come out with. Um, lots of other questions coming in. I've saved them for the uh, for the second half of the show, uh, which uh, will be coming up after the ad break. A big thanks to all our sponsors. First off, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 2545 Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com. Website skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD hemp and cannabinoid specialists. You can find them at thegohd.com. And thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources. They are handmade in Cumbria and you can find more information out on their website, mrvickies.co.uk. And if you want to order any, email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Big thanks to Blowhole Brewery, a new beer uh, made on Tyneside. The cans are all designed in the colours of Newcastle United strips from days gone by. Black and white there, the purple and blue and the good old-fashioned blue from the entertainers days. I will get more information on the Blowhole Brewery range, such as Geordie Juice from blowholebrewery.co.uk. Thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the technical side of things and video side of things. And thanks to qtechshop.co.uk the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls and Newcastle, and the guys who do our website, nufcmatters.com. If you want to subscribe to the show, then all you need to do is click the subscribe button below. You can also hit the thumb up, which does us a favour, by liking the video, and click share to share to your social media, such as Twitter and Facebook. We're also available as a podcast on iTunes and Spotify and the rest. And if you want to contribute to the show, Use the QR code. It takes you straight to the membership pack and you can join the channel. What do you get for your membership pack? You get a scarf, a cup, a pen and a membership card and entry into the monthly draw. You can also make a donation by hitting the dollar sign in the chat tonight. We also give you something for free if you subscribe to the show. To get your car sticker, email john at nufcmatters.com and he will post you one out. We also support the food bank on this show. And if you want to make a virtual donation to the food bank, then go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and make a donation today. On our website, we've got lots of T-shirts, cups, pens, you name it, memorabilia, if you want to buy it and support the show. For Christmas, we have the Bruno Christmas Jumper, which is selling rather well. And we'll have the Bobble Hats, play like Almiron, Bruno's Magic and Bruno's 39 and Joe Linton's J7. Get yourself to nufcmatters.com to buy them today. If you want to buy people a ticket for one of our events next year, 
We've got an evening with Steve Howie, which is Friday the 24th of February at the Tyneside Irish Centre. Tickets are £50 from nufcmatters.com or newcastlelegends.com. And you can also buy them on Woucher before Christmas. Get somebody a bargain and a nice Christmas present. Peter Beardsley is on on the 10th of February at St. Dom's Catholic Club in Newcastle. Tickets available direct from the venue. And for this one, Friday the 2nd of June next year at the Grand Hotel in Gosforth, 6.30 start. An evening with Rob Lee, Lee Clark and John Beresford. To book tickets, contact Natalie at healandtour.org.uk or visit their website, healandtour.org.uk forward slash events. If you're looking for a Christmas present and people like a book, then get yourself NME from the Bender Squad to the Gremlins or the last remaining copies of Black or White, No Grey Areas, Lee Clark's autobiography. And you can get them from www.badboysbooks.net. OK, I'm uh, just going to get to a couple of your comments that you have left in the chat. We'll start with George's. Do you think that the improvements on the training centre, um, uh, our bad run of injuries should occur less often? I mean, there's you know, obviously big developments going to be taking place over the course of the next, uh, you know, the next couple of months. Um, again, I've stuck a link in the chat there. There's an article in the Evening Chronicle um, about uh, the upgrade taking shape. Uh, players have been able to use um, as the Chronicle describes an incredible new feature. They've got a new uh, restaurant area, which, you know, uh, you know, little things like that make a big difference to, to footballers. You know, they've, they've got to be in comfort, got to be, you know, they've got to be happy in their environment, their work environment, like anybody. But, um, but yeah, look, the, the changes will make a big difference moving forward. And it, and again, I, I do say this, but when, when players look to sign, sign for a club, Ross, it, you know, and they get shown round the ground or a training facility. It's the first thing to look at, isn't it? They they want to know that this club can hit the heights both on and off the pitch. Absolutely, absolutely. I know it, it, it's it's little things like like that. You've got to look at the infrastructure and in the in the facilities. You know, most most players will kind of when they come into a club, they'll they'll have an understanding of of what the um of what's been happening on the pitch. They'll have, you know they'll be able to, to see that from afar. They'll be able to see the style of play. Be able to probably understand a little bit more about where they fit into it and, and what a club's ambitions are. But if then you're turning up to a um, to a rickety old training centre, and it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna sell a club to 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 anybody really. Um, if you turn up to a state of the art training centre with with um, with good facilities, whether that's um, on the on the kind of the rehab and the hydrotherapy stuff and the pool and in the, the physio areas and the gym areas and all that sort of stuff. But also, you know, just the, the, the kind of general feeling about it. You turn up in the, you know, everybody's stuck in a small canteen or or if there's a, a large dining area where where everybody can can meet and mix in. And it's it is these little things that appeal to, to players. It's not just about um you know how much money they can they can make because you know they can go anywhere and they can they can get good money. It's about they're making their work and environment on a day-to-day basis, week-to-week basis, as, as comfortable and as, as good as possible. So I think the training ground developments are are huge. I think they're, they're really, really important. Um, in terms of the the, the actual question around um, around injuries and stuff like that, I think it all helps. It all should all play into the to the same um, the same pool. Really, if if you're if you're improving your facilities, your medical facilities, your rehab facilities, how you how you how you can kind of um, recover post match, what you can do pre match, all that sort of stuff. It, there should be no doubt at all that it that it will help with with the injury situation. But at the same time, injuries do occur, injuries do happen. You know, even all the clubs with with better facilities than Newcastle do still pick up injuries. So it's it's not something that's just going to be a, a magic wand, but uh, but it will it will have an impact. I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely will. And, um, you know, th- that's all we need, you know, just investment in the right areas, on the pitch, off the pitch, uh, it will be. Yeah, John says, did we enjoy the pantomime provided by the Valacano fans on Saturday? Absolutely class and arguably the highlight of the game. They were a great bunch of lads and they all came to the uh, Dog and Parrot pre-match and they invaded Malcolm's talking. I stuck the video up on uh, 
on on the channel. You'll be able to find it on there. And uh, they were just a great bunch of lads. Yeah, that, that's what football should be about when you you know when you you know travel home and away, uh, coming in in contact with fans from you know different parts of the the world, um, and you know being able to share a common bond, which is football. And that's what it that's what it's all about. It's fantastic. Great bunch of lads, and I uh, hope they enjoyed their time in Newcastle. Um, the next one is this from Tom Enzo Fernandez to Newcastle. Um, he says now this was mentioned in the press conference actually yesterday um, when Eddie was asked about this and Alan Shearer was referenced um, because he'd made reference in his commentary on the final uh, that Newcastle should take a look at the youngster. And again, I'll stick the link in the uh, the chat from the uh, Evening Chronicle. Uh, but Lionel Messi has has, has hailed Fernandez uh, as you know one of the great uh, one of the greats coming through the ranks with with Argentina, and he's not surprised at all uh, by the the spectacular rise of the twenty one year old. Um, Eddie, as always, doesn't give much away, uh, but what he did say was you know that he was watching the other side and he apologised <laughs> to Alan. Um, uh, it has to be said as well, tongue in cheek, that uh, there was also a question from Keith Downey from Sky about if Lionel Messi, uh, Lionel Messi, sorry, was available in January. Um, w- you know, w- would they be looking at him? And he just said, "Don't start that rumor." But look, in the grand scheme of things, Fernandez is he ticks all the boxes, doesn't he? As a potential Newcastle recruitment, if um, if the deal could be done, he does. You know, fantastic young player, fantastic talent. Um, you know, he's going to be after after that World Cup. If for those who weren't aware of him maybe but I think he's on everybody's radar now. Um obviously um really, really highly talented. I think you're right, he fits a lot. He, he would take a lot of lot of boxes for Newcastle. They're looking at bringing in young young players, they're looking at, at, at looking at some of the, the best up and coming players um in in well, across the across the world, not just uh, not just in Europe, but um someone like Fernandez is gonna have a hell of a lot of interest in him. You know, there's going to be a lot of big clubs, and and, I, and I've said this before on the show. Newcastle just have to understand where where they are in the in the kind of the pecking order. Not you know, the ambitions there, the club, and the finances will be there once once all the commercial uh, deals start to kick off, and and um, and we can generate more money as a as a club. But at the minute, you know, there's, there's a lot of clubs further or higher up in the pecking order than Newcastle and, and for someone like Enzo Fernandez he'll have a um, he'll have a host of suitors from uh, from big Champions League clubs so might would be a tricky one to do but uh, what a player another another real talented uh, talented young player coming out of out of Portuguese out of uh, sorry Argentinian football uh, João Felix um, is another one linked Tom's just saying do you think he might come to Newcastle I don't I don't know um I just it, it feels like he's been touted around around the place, and, and obviously Newcastle have been linked with him. I think Newcastle are going to get linked with a, a lot of players. Um, I don't I don't necessarily see this one one coming off, but again another another talented player. I think uh, there's going to, again there's going to be a few clubs in for for his services, and he, he probably want guaranteed European football. Um, I think Arsenal uh, are, are, are interested in, uh, in Joe Felix because obviously they've got the an issue with with Gabriel Jesus, but. Um, Another another great player just never hasn't quite worked out from a big price target in Atletico Madrid and it's it's it seemed to weigh heavily on him um, a bit but he's obviously still a, a young man and, and got a got a lot of football ahead of him so um, did had a good World Cup as well so um, you can see why there's a lot of interest in him but I'd be surprised if he ended up in Newcastle. Yeah, I would as well. Uh, but we're going to get a lot of that over the next few weeks. John says, uh, Ross, do you reckon that some of our January transfer business might have already been agreed? A bit more creativity could go a long, long way. I think the, the, I think there's one or two deals which will which have been kind of not set up, but but will um, will have have been discussed. Um, I think there's. I think I, I've said before on this on on this show. I don't think that there'll be a, a, a Load of activity. I think there'll be be a couple of deals, perhaps you know, there's a, a a player or two going out and and one or two coming in. Um, so it, it January is a very very tricky month, and I don't think Newcastle need a lot in January this year. Um, unlike 
unlike the January I've just come where clearly the, the club needed needed to bring four or five or six players in um just to to try and stave off relegation. Don't think um I don't think Newcastle are in that that position. And Janu- January generally is a is a tough month to get to get good deals over over the line. Newcastle did fantastically well um to to bring bring you know Kieran Trippier and uh, and Bruno and Chris Wood and everybody else, Matt Target and, and Dan Byrne. Uh, last time, but in in general, it's a it's a tricky month to get right. So I don't see there being too much too much uh, activity this month. Uh, this month coming up. Oh, me neither, mate. Uh, definitely can't see um, massive ins and outs, but I do think there'll still be one or two key ones. That's that's all I'll uh, say on that. Uh, lots of questions coming in about the uh, the Bournemouth game, uh, which we will come to uh, towards the end. But about a player that's at the club at the moment. Elliot Anderson, John says, has he been underused this season? And do you think another loan might help him? I do think a loan would help him. I absolutely do. Yeah, I think he'd be one that personally, I, I would, I would be looking at maybe pushing out in in January and getting him, getting him six months. Whether Newcastle wanted to do that or not, obviously is 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 uh, is up to them. But. Has he been underused? Maybe he's a little bit. He's, he, he did get a couple of knocks and nails. I, I do think he's he's ahead of others in the pecking order, though. He's, a, he's he's he looks like he's moved ahead of one or two two players in the in the pecking order, which probably means that he'll he might stay for the for the rest of the season um, because he's he seems to be he seems to be somebody that Eddie Howe really likes and and trusts a little bit as well. So I'd like to see him given a, a little bit more game time. I, I don't think that's probably going to happen. At Newcastle, um, so for me, I would like to get him out on on loan into the into the Championship um, for six months. Yeah, I think he would benefit more from that than anything else. And just a just a quick one on the youngsters as well, really. Who um, you know who who were featured um, against you know Rio Vallecano the other day, mate. It was um, good to see Dylan Stevenson getting a run out. We heard so much about him, um, and and from my perspective, you know, just just great to see these young youngsters actually getting a chance. Absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 uh, it's fantastic to see. It's what we all want to see is is um, is Newcastle fans and people who follow Newcastle and, and and have done for for a number of years. You want to see those young players coming through. And Newcastle have been starved a little bit of, of the best um, of, of of kind of academy prospects coming through. Um, so great to see Dylan Stevenson getting getting some game time. Great to see obviously Lewis Miley as well getting some some uh, game time and, and players who are who are highly rated. It's the first step for these for these lads, and we shouldn't um, put too much expectation on them. We shouldn't um, put too much pressure on them. You know, th- there's a long, long way to go, and we've seen young players who've come through in the past um, who can who've, who've who we thought, yeah, this could be the, the next big thing, and it's not. It's just not quite happened for them for for one reason or another. It might be injuries. It might be um, it might be loss of form. It might be attitude it could be it might just be that they're not quite at that them levels um but it's great to see them being given that opportunity great to see Eddie Howe taking an interest in the in the academy and the players coming through and hopefully we can get um one or two into the first team over the next couple of seasons yeah fingers crossed Lawrence says uh, morning guys thoughts on Madison still in Dubai considering we're playing them in six days uh, I'm looking. Uh, am I looking too much into that? It is interesting, isn't it? You know that somebody who's such a big influence on uh, Leicester's squad could, you know, could could essentially miss that game. Yeah, I hadn't realised he was still in in Dubai. I've, I've not I've not seen that. So if that's the case, even if he's even if he's back over the next uh, day or two, it, it would be very, would seem very unlikely that he'll be he'd be integrated in the in the Leicester squad by then. Be surprised if he's uh, if he's if he's still in Dubai. You'd think that they'd want to get him back. He, you know, it's a couple of weeks now since since England were um, was it what a week week ten days since England were knocked out. So um, yeah, he's a obviously very important player for for Leicester. So they'll I'm sure they'll be trying to desperately trying to get him back uh, back on the training ground and off the off the beach or wherever he is. Jordy Tuvalay says, "Come on, Ross, use your chairman rule at Wickham to get Anderson on loan." Yeah, I'm sure he'd love playing on the Glebe slope. <laughs> um, do you think Botman uh, move to centre defensive midfielder would be good for the team and the player? I wouldn't change something that isn't broken, Gary. Um, I think leaving leaving Botman at centre half is is wise. He's he's just a revelation in there, isn't he? Yes, he is best best centre half in the 
in the um, in the Newcastle squad at the minute. So um, and defensive midfielder wise, you know you've you've got Bruno who can play in there. You've got Shelby who can who can do a job in there. Albeit he's not necessarily defensive orientated, but he he, he is that kind of quarterback or or player who, who gets the the game moving from from there. So yeah, um, I think it, yeah. I think Botman Botman keep him in the centre of defence. You've got the best defensive record in the league. Why change? Why fix something that ain't? That ain't yeah, he, he could do it. He could do it if there was an injury crisis. But let's hope that doesn't come. Dylan Stevenson's got a great chance of making it. Says John, even though he didn't get much ball on Saturday, his movement up front was top quality. Uh, P. Davison, morning. He says just got back on, so I'm back off to watch from the start. Have a canny Christmas. Same to you, mate. Same to you. And Lawrence says there uh, that Madison uploaded videos of him and his other half in Dubai late last night. Playing golf. Oh, well, good luck to him. Uh, get his handicap down. Uh, uh, I think that's 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 more important than playing Newcastle. Clearly, and okay. Well, we've got fifteen minutes left, so let let's start looking ahead to the uh, the match tonight. Newcastle United in Carabao Cup action, and uh, it is a seven forty five kickoff. And it goes ahead, of course, 24 hours earlier than originally uh, planned because of the industrial action, which is taking place today. Uh, don't try to get into the ground tonight because it is, as often most games are now at St. James's Park, a complete sellout. Uh, there must be an outcome tonight uh, if the scores are level after 90 minutes. It doesn't go to extra time. It goes straight to a penalty shootout. Uh, the winners tonight will take their place in the quarterfinal of the competition and quarterfinals are set to take place round about January the 9th next year. Um, if Newcastle uh, are to progress to the quarterfinals, that's going to fall between our FA Cup game and a Premier League game. Uh, so quite a hefty fixture list if Newcastle do get through. The draw for the quarterfinal, um, not that I'm preempting Newcastle being in it, of course, uh, will take place on Thursday night after Manchester City have played Liverpool. What did Eddie Howe's press conference tell us yesterday? Well, it told us that after the win against Rio Vallecano, uh, that there was an injury doubt over ASM, but it's nothing serious. And that Callum Wilson is going to be fit and available to play against his former club. Isaac, of course, as we've already discussed on the show, remains out. And uh, that is you know, something which is going to unfortunately drag on, we feel. And there is, of course, a uh, question mark still uh, over Ryan Fraser. Uh, Matt Ritchie, will they be involved in this game? Who knows? But uh, Eddie Howe was keeping his cards very, very close to his chest yesterday. As for Bournemouth, well, news broke yesterday of a big problem within the camp of a virus. And the Chronicle have uh, covered that on the line today. Um, we don't know which players have been affected. We do know that there was injury doubts over David Brook. Lloyd Kelly and Norberto Nero. Uh, there was also uh, question marks over the availability of Chris Me um, Mepham and Kiefer Moore uh, because they've both been on World Cup duty. Um, this will be Bournemouth's first game since they were taken over by the American Bill Foley. And uh, just looking back at their uh, run in this Carabao Cup so far, um, they made it through to the next round after a 4-1 win against Everton, who, of course, have been struggling in the league. Um, Gary O'Neill's done a good job. Uh, he initially appointed on an interim basis, but he took the job permanently uh, in late November. The referee tonight uh, has his second game of the season in charge of a Newcastle fixture, and that is Peter Banks. Uh, the 1-1 Premier League draw at Wolves was the last game that we saw him. VAR is not in use tonight. And uh, that will please quite a few Newcastle fans and Bournemouth fans, I would imagine. Uh, don't forget, the food bank will be set up, as usual, over the road from Shearer's. Any financial donations there, as we always uh, like to remind you, uh, will be doubled by Jamie Rubin. Super Mac will be at the Dog and Parrot at 6 o'clock and at 1030 Gibbo will be down at Pumphrey's at 6 o'clock as well. So you have got uh, some pre-match talk-ins uh, to go to if you so wish. So we did have a couple of questions from people. Uh, Tom basically said, Ross, if we beat Bournemouth tonight, do we fear anyone in the next round? Well, I would say the winner of Man City Liverpool. I wouldn't I wouldn't say we fear them, but it, the one you'd want to avoid. Yes, uh, that, that was exactly what I was going to say, Steve, the, the one you want to avoid. But... I don't think I think the way Newcastle are, are playing, or certainly were playing before the the break. And let's let's be honest, we don't know how how things are going to pan out after this break. We hope that 
that the form continues and the momentum continues. But the way they were playing before the um, before the World Cup, then you wouldn't fear anybody, particularly in a in a in a one off um, cup tie, um, especially if you get them at, at St James as at, at home as well. So, look, Man City and Liverpool are always going to be the, the kind of the favourites, but. Um, but yeah, I think Newcastle have, have, have got enough on a on on a, any given day to to beat pretty much most teams in the in the Premier League. They've shown that match Man City, match Liverpool already in the Premier League this season. Um, so yeah, nothing to nothing to fear. Not the way Newcastle have, have played in the first half of the of the campaign. Yeah, I would agree with you, mate, one hundred percent. John fancy share to play uh, the night. He says it's his birthday today, and he'll still want to play. Tom saying, uh, "Do you expect Chris Wood to start tonight? I think he will start. He's been doing well since he scored the penalty in the friendly. I think, I think Chris Wood will start. I think Wilson will be on the bench. Yeah, I think so as well. I think, um, I think the team will be probably very close to to the team that started on on Saturday. Um, maybe he's one or two two changes, but I'd certainly expect. Chris Wood to be to be leading the line. Um, I know Eddie Howe said Callum Wilson is is fit and, and raring to go. You just worry about Callum Wilson. You constantly worry about him. There were so many little stories of him missing training in, in the World Cup and having this little niggle or that little niggle. So um, hopefully he is 100% fit. He's playing up against against one of his former teams in Bournemouth, obviously. So I'm sure he'd be desperate to, to start and get a goal. But I would expect Chris Wood to, to be leading the line, I think. What will, have, what will have happened over the last two or three weeks as well is that Eddie Howe will have been, have been preparing for this Bournemouth game and he'll be he'll be preparing as best as what he can with the resources that he's got available, not knowing how how um, the England players would have come back, what time they would have come back, what you know how when Bruno would have come back from in what condition share as well. So I think he'll probably work with the majority of the players that he had at his disposable at his disposal and he'll have put a plan in place around around those but then slot maybe he's one or two different players in as well. Yeah, uh, Lawrence says wrap Wilson and Cotton Wool until Boxing Day, and I say do the same with Bruno as well. I can understand because being third in the league, Newcastle fans are very keen on a Champions League finish. I think uh, would be an amazing start to this uh, new regime's reign if uh, they could get the Champions League at the first time of asking. Uh, it's funny, John, as well. You mentioned share about birthdays, mate. Dave Hilly uh, had his birthday. Uh, on this day, uh, Alan Duffy, not somebody as as well known, but another Newcastle player, Irvin Natras, another birthday boy, Alex Mackey. Uh, of course, remember that goal he scored in the Premier League and uh, against Sheffield Wednesday. Jeremy, not somebody who was uh, probably on many shirts uh, from that era. Fitzall did a canny job uh, in the uh, the 2010 uh, season. One size, best nickname yeah. in football. One one Fantastic. size fits all. Fantastic, fantastic nickname that, yeah. But uh, yeah, so a lot of people sharing birthdays, uh, you know, the black and white persuasion, former players uh, as well. John, uh, jumping the gun slightly, says, Ross, if we reach Wembley in the League Cup, any idea what the ticket allocation would be? In the FA Cup, I think it's a miserable 26,000. It's indefensible and surely support as groups can put pressure on. I mean, I don't know what ticket allocation would be for a for a, a, a cup final. And again, we're being very presumptuous. But yeah, if it was sure. it would it always causes massive problems. This does. doesn't it? Does I've been fortunate enough to in previous years when Newcastle have been at Wembley to get to get tickets. Um, you know, um, in in kind of you know ninety seven, ninety nine, or yeah, ninety eight, ninety nine. Um, but there was always a scramble for tickets then and they'll be exactly the same uh, this time around. I do think that it'd be around the 32, 33,000 mark. So you you would get a, a little bit, a little bit more, but there'll absolutely be a, a real scramble for tickets. But um, let's not, let's not get too, too far ahead of ourselves. The League Cup do allocate more um, than, than what you get from, from the FA Cup. But yeah, it would be, a, it would be a real scramble. For tickets, just on the birthdays front as well, just a, a little one to, to, to flag up, just a little cheeky one. Um, not a birthday today, but tomorrow, um, the 21st of December, it is the 18th birthday of um, Angelo Gabriel, who is um, the young Brazilian lad at, uh, at Santos, um, who Newcastle have been, have been watching, who have been linked with. It's his 18th birthday tomorrow. Why is that significant? Well, it's significant because you can't sign or players can't move before their 18th birthday. So if, even if any club wanted to have signed 
uh, Andrew, um, they wouldn't have been able, he wouldn't have been able to move until his 18th birthday. So is that is, is that a, a, is something that's likely to happen? He's, he's a player that Newcastle have, have certainly watched and certainly interested in. Now that he once he turns 18, he's then able to to move uh, move clubs. So it might be one of those that have, have watched this space. Yep, interesting stuff. Uh, Leeds on New Year's Eve is crazy. We never get a game on that day. Always Boxing Day. Yeah, I did. I think everybody agrees with that. John says Lee, uh, the players at the World Cup have played less games than if the league had carried on normally. Interesting. It's a proper baller's birthday. He also says, yeah, you're putting yourself in that category, are you? It's Irvin's 70th, says Roger. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, happy birthday to, to, to all those guys. So, yes, the big question, Ross, is Newcastle United versus Bournemouth. You've already given us an idea of what um, you, know, you think the team is going to be. Um, how do you see the game going? It was a draw earlier in the season. Eddie Howe described it as a, a subdued performance. Um, and he also said that he's not, and the players certainly aren't, taking this game for granted, not underestimating the opposition, which is always good to hear. Um, and he also said that the crowd, he, he wants the, the players to reconnect with the crowd as they did against Chelsea. Full, a full house, of course, sellout. Um, because there's an energy which develops when that happens. And, the crowd have to play their part as well, but you know what? What's your what's your take? Do you think we'll do you think we'll get a result? I do, I do. I think um, I, 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 I'm very confident going into, into this game, which um, which is probably the, the kiss of death. But that's that's how I'm feeling uh, ahead of it. Um, you know, we saw against against Palace that cup ties are, are a very different beast, a very different game to. To you know the Premier League games, and, and we hope that the preparation has has gone spot on and been really, um, really worthwhile. The the, the obviously the the trip, um, to Saudi, and then the the, the, the two games that they played should hopefully stand them in in good stead. Um, I think it'll be a strong team that that he puts out. You know, we've taught one or two players who, who might miss out. Uh, Callum Wilson, Bruno. I'm not sure if they'll if they'll play, but other than that, I think it'll be a it'll be a fairly strong, a, a very strong team. Um, in terms of how the game is 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 going to go, look, I'm going to go. I'm going to go comfortable. I'm going to go three 0 Newcastle. I think it could be a it could be a really positive performance. And you're right about the crowd. The crowd have a have a huge role to play in this game, and it's going to be the first one back for a while. I hope the atmosphere is absolutely um, absolutely bouncing. I hope it's it's as good as what it, it can be under the lights at St James's. is always a it's always a fantastic evening. Um, and you know, fingers crossed, they can they can get over that line and, and get get through to the 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 quarterfinals. I'm really interested in 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 an over come to the end of the show. But I'm really interested in what people think about League Cup versus Champions League. If you had a if you had that kind of, I know we've talked about it before, but if you had that that option of would you want to see Newcastle win the League Cup or would you prefer them to, to get in the Champions League? If you had to take one or the other, I'm League Cup all the way. I've said this before. So I'm really hoping that they um, that they put in a, a they don't hold anything back and think oh well we'll use this as a warm up for the for the Boxing Day game against Leicester. I want them to really go for it today and and get into get all the way to Wembley um, and and hopefully we see Newcastle lift some sort of a way. Yeah, League Cup for me all day, mate. Thanks, Lawrence. He says, brilliant show as always. Hope everyone has a lovely Christmas and how good is it knowing the tuna back tonight? Lovely stuff. Prediction from me tonight, I think we'll win 2-0. Ross? Yeah, I'll go three. I'll go a bit more comfortable with, with three. Early goal, 3-0. Um, fingers crossed. Okay, I know I go on about it each time I'm on the show, but please subscribe to the show. Uh, we are literally, uh, and I'll, I'll do this until we hit this golden number, uh, but we did have a few more subscribers last night. 49,492 subscribers now. Uh, that's gone up by 200, uh, 201 in the last uh, 10 days since I started asking people to subscribe officially on the show. Hit the like button, which is the thumb underneath the video, and please subscribe. We are 508 away from hitting 50,000. We'll be the first Newcastle United uh, YouTube channel to do that. 
and that would be a hell of an achievement if we could do it before uh, before New Year. It would be great to go into the New Year and do that. So uh, please do it. Uh, I am back tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock until 11 again in the morning. I am doing a, a podcast with uh, Ben Jacobs. Uh, we'll be getting his insight because the uh, transfer window uh, isn't open yet, but it's starting to hot up. Lots of names getting mentioned. Ross and I have already mentioned a few uh, today. Uh, ben will be giving us his views on that. And of course, big countdown to his... The game where he is in two minds. He's a Leicester man by heart, but a Newcastle fan as well. Uh, it's a big. It's the Ben Jacobs derby coming up after Christmas. So I uh, always enjoy speaking to Ben about that. But uh, for now, Ross, have a great Christmas, mate. And we look forward to getting you back on the platform early 2023. Yes, you too, Steve. Have a great Christmas, everyone, and, uh, and a great new year. And catch up soon. And good luck to Wickham. Take care, mate. Cheers now. <laughs>